Hello, hello, hello. It's Friday. My name is Abigail Klutz here in Olathe, Kansas, and it's keto time. It's time to debunk the crazy keto claims going on out there with the hot buzzword of keto. And here to join us is Dr. Heather Carden. In. Hello. Hello. Oh, you look good. You got your got your lips on. You got your doctor's gear on. That's awesome. <laughs> What's that? None. I said somebody. Sorry, I'm late. Somebody stopped by to pick up some signs for some keto events this weekend. So had to get those out and about in Johnson County. Can you hear me? Awesome. Well, look, we got some starts already. We got. What's up, Angie Lee in the house, Brett Coffey, Blair, Rebecca, Maria, Holly. Hey, guys, Stephanie Kahn, how you doing? They're all back. They want more. As we go on debunking these keto claims, um, drop any questions that you have below. And actually, today, I have my laptop on, and I'm going to try and, like, write out some of the questions with the time. Oh, I can't see the time on mine. Maybe I can... Hey, Brett Coffey, I know you're, uh, we call him uh, PJ Prover. He's in Canada, he's in Vancouver, and he's like got a big old office and he just works in his PJs with Prove It all day long. So drop the time for us and the questions going on so when people want uh, answers, they can easily find us. That'd be awesome, man. So Dr. Heather, how's your week going? Fantabulous. I actually um, had the opportunity to have an expo at the Kansas City ADHD organization, talked about ketones and mental health, was out of, of the governor's mansion last night in Topeka, besides working daily in the office, sharing the ketone conversation, teaching people how to optimize their health. But again, with all those amazing things comes a lot of sometimes crazy questions that people have either have either heard about 20 years ago or 50 years ago and sometimes that information is not current and credible so i say yes to you on friday so we can be current and we can be credible and it looks like nurse trina already has a question there about sodium yep super Go super ahead. common I know. question so yeah i always ask Go people if you're salty right actually being salty is an amazing thing to be we know that if you pull blood work on a comprehensive metabolic panel i'm talking medicine again sodium is the very first thing we check we know if we go to the er they give you a bag of sodium or saline water it is super important for every single cell of your body ketones are an amazing diuretic so as we pull water toxins and fat out of the cell we actually have to make sure we're getting enough salt. So sea salt, kosher salt, um, pink Himalayan sea salt, not that stuff you get in the diner on the table because that stuff has been heated and it's been all sorts of chemically messed up and your body does not need that type of sodium. It needs things occurring in tomatoes and celery and again, pink Himalayan sea salt. So salt your food. Don't be afraid to be salty. It's actually cool to be salty and healthy to be salty. <laughs> cool to be salty. So when they see this package, and they see, you know, sodium, and they flip out. They're like, ah, oh, there's salt in it. What do you have to say about that salt right there? How much is in your ketchup and barbecue sauce? <laughs> You're getting me on a Friday. No, it's actually in the proper ratio as our body uses the ketones as a natural diuretic or anti-inflammatory. It's in the proper ratio to replace what is normally lost through a normal diuretic process or what's happening in the bathroom. So again, ketones pull all these toxins and stuff out of your cells. You've got to have sodium. Every single cell needs it. So that's in the proper ratio that your body needs, not the stuff again and the other stuff. I won't name names. Awesome. And before we go any further, just want to go ahead and say Abigail Klutz here, independent prove it promoter, along with Dr. Heather Carden, independent prove it promoter. Um, before we go on debunking keto claims. Just want to put that out there. Um, the first one that I have for you, Dr. Heather, is when people say carbs are an essential nutrient for good health. So I say, show me a textbook that says that there are essential carbohydrates for our body. Show me a biochemistry book or medical book that says that we need carbohydrates to perform our daily functions. There are essential amino acids there are essential fatty acids, 
there are no essential carbohydrates. So if you find one, please show me or text it here. I'd love to see that one. But as to date, there's been no essential carbohydrate. So you do not have to have bananas. You do not have to have oatmeal. You do not have to have blueberries to get optimal health at that cellular level and to perform amazing. Okay, awesome. With that, you if you're not getting all those um, fruit and carbs, are you in danger of vitamin deficiency when you're going on a low carb, high fat diet or keto? Well, that's a perfect question because not all carbohydrates are created equal. So when we're eating that green leafy stuff that's full of nitrogen and iron and B vitamins, those actually are healthy things that our divine creator grew for us to break down and use. Things like donuts and pop tarts and chemically GMO'd fruit and vegetables, our body doesn't know what to do with them. And so we're not even getting the nutrients out of it. So if in doubt, keep it out. If it provides nutrients, then you keep it in. So again, no essential carbohydrate. Haven't found one to date. You're always picking on my pop tart. I, I, know. I know it's too hard. So you know. Oh my gosh, the fiber question. I think I'm going to avoid that. Somebody else asked about kidney question. You, you pick what you want. Okay, cool, cool. Um, let me get through because these are Another one is people are equating keto with Atkins and they're saying a low carb diet, high protein diet will excrete calcium and result in or having kidney stones, liver problems. So explain the word equation going on and what's really happening with high fat, low carb or keto. I think people are confusing it just like when they say I'm going to have a Coke, but maybe they're getting a Dr. Pepper or a Sprite or a Pepsi. They're interchanging that word. So really what we know is every ketogenic diet is low carb. You can get in ketosis on a ketogenic diet, on an Atkins diet, on an HCG diet, on a starvation diet, um, on a fasting diet. You can get yourself into a state of ketosis, but the true ketogenic diet is actually using fat for fuel. So it's 80% fat. Um, we know that uh, Atkins side is super high in protein and moderate fat. So those are actually ratios are opposite. What happens with the high protein diet is it actually can be dangerous on your kidney because at a high level, proteins can be very dehydrating. Our body goes through a process called gluconeogenesis when we have more than four or five ounces of protein at a meal. So Dr. Atkins did lead the way. I want to give him a bunch of kudos and Jackie, um, Jackie Everstein who wrote the amazing cookbook. However, we learned a lot from that. We learned that we don't need carbohydrates. We also learned that we only need proteins in moderation. We do not need high proteins because that can lead to kidney disease and can lead to heart failure and can lead to dehydration at that cellular level. So not all diets are created equal, but those words can be interchangeable. A ketogenic diet we know is how we come into this world burning fat for fuel. When we're breastfed, we're burning fat for fuel. Elite athletes, ultra endurance athletes are super efficient. They're burning fat for fuel. They're not burning protein for fuel. They're burning fat for fuel. So ketogenic diet is safe. Again, as we come into this world, we know that ketones can be water soluble. They are not stored. Things that are fatty acid or fat soluble are actually stored like glucose is stored and extra proteins can be stored, but ketones themselves are not stored. We do have fat storage, which is a whole nother conversation. Hopefully that answered it. Simply. No. Yep. Simply. It's never simple with you, but that's why we have you on and not me. So the other question is, and this one just, ooh, this is my own, this is my own family. I'm, I'm debunking my family here. Um, high fat ketogenic diets will clog your arteries and give you high cholesterol and heart disease. So we've studied the ketogenic diet for 100 years. There are people who successfully are living on a ketogenic diet for the last decade or two. However, if you have stomach issues, if you're, if you're choosing improper fat or you have maldigestion, maybe you've had part of your colon removed, maybe you've had hepatitis or you've had liver cancer or you've had your pancreas removed for lots of issues, health concerns, it can actually be a little bit unsafe for your body for any diet, whether you're eating donuts or whether you're eating Coca-Cola. But however, what we do know is in a, in a normal healthy diet, ketones are an optimal fuel for our body. They are safe. The right fats do not clog up our arteries. The proper fats do not cause kidney failure. The proper fats don't cause congestive heart failure. Sugars cause liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Sugar causes renal failure. Sugar causes heart disease. Sugar causes inflammation, which is what plaquing is. So it's sugar that's the devil, not the fat. That's right. I always like uh, Dr. Adam Nally. He says, don't blame the butter for what the bread did. Right? So the, sh the shuttle. So the, the other one, 
very passionate about because I spend a lot of time in the bodybuilding fitness arena. Low carb diets will cause muscle wasting. False. High protein diet can cause muscle wasting because carbohydrates only give us fuel for 30 minutes. So what happens when you run out of your fuel after 30 minutes on the treadmill or 30 minutes strength training? Then your body goes through that gluconeogenesis process, taps into your lean muscle mass, tears apart your lean muscle and breaks it apart and uses that for fuel, that glucose fuel. So that's absolutely false. We need to flip that upside down and say that a high, even a low, low, I would say high protein, high carb, low carb, low protein, all those things will break down our lean muscle mass. Ketones stop an enzyme called myostatin, which stops our muscle from being broken down. And let's go in a little bit more on that because, I mean, we have so many of the world's top bodybuilders eating a high carb diet, low fat still, and using exogenous ketones. So why are they doing that? Can you get the effects of ketones even if you're eating high carbs? And why would an athlete who's eating a high carb diet still use exogenous ketones? Because we know that beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is the ketone body in exogenous ketones, they reduce inflammation at the cellular level. They're going to give you more oxygen at the cellular level, even on a high-carb diet. They're also going to help reduce inflammation and help recovery on the other end and lead to preserving your lean muscle mass. We also know it downregulates our neurotransmitters, so your performance is better, your spot-on recall is better. Your brain doesn't stop you from being one tenth of a second faster, doing one more push up, one more pull up, one more rep. So, when you're neurologically and properly feeding your brain, you can do more. And more can be anything from a push up to an athlete to folding another load of laundry. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, let's go one back to one of our viewers. I loved it about, um, you know, we just came out with a new product. I don't have it on me, it's the 431. Dr. Mary Newport oils that we have. You can order. I'm a traveler, biohacking traveler. Take them, open them up on the salad, drink it. But talk about absorbing macronutrients with the aid of fats. I, I mean, this blew my mind when we heard it at Keto Academy about absorbing your salads nutrients. You need the fat. Yeah, so it, digestion begins at our mouth, but we need lots of things to actually aid in the absorption, which happens in our small intestine. So the ketone packet you keep holding up is very acidic. Ketones, our stomach environment is very acidic, helping us break down fats. So the, the 431 has what's called medium chain triglycerides. It's a C6 through a C12 blend. Those are medium chains, not short chains. And when we take the C12 out of the coconut oil, that's then we become a liquid or have an MCT at room temperature. It allows our body to digest food or kind of preset the body ready for digestion and preset the body ready for absorption because the stomach just dumps in acid, the liver sorts and sifts. Again, if they can already sift that MCT oil into a usable form of energy, then our small intestine can absorb things much more readily when you give it the proper environment. So when you eat, if you're a hunter gatherer and you go kill a deer, or I'm sorry if anyone's a vegetarian, you go kill a deer, you eat the whole thing, you eat the skin, you eat the fat. If you're eating chicken and ribs, you eat the skin, you eat the fat. That's what the 431 is. It's got the fat combined with the protein, so our body can optimally break that down for us. Awesome. And then the other question that I wanted to go back to was on fiber. I think what they're saying is, I and I've heard this, a ketogenic diet can be low in fiber and so detrimental to your colon. Um, I mean, I'll debunk that. I eat more fibrous vegetables than I ever did. Of course, I'm low-carb, not keto. But what would you have to say about fiber? And, well, uh, so there's in, yeah, there's insoluble and there's soluble fiber. And this whole net and total thing was actually meant to be applied towards green leafy vegetables. It was not meant to be applied towards bars that have, oh, hey, I'm starting at 25 carbs minus this, minus this, minus this. So I don't let people do math because our guts aren't perfect. It's all total. And the total net fiber issue is supposed to be with like inulin or chicory root, which is in the 3.0 as a prebiotic to help turn on healthy gut bugs. It's meant to, to, to be, again, applied toward green leafy vegetables. It's not meant to be applied for things that come in a plastic bottle that you buy at the store because your body's trying to break down things that you drive through for. So 
like bleached and rich bread. Your body's not meant to digest that. So then people have to substitute fiber. You're going to get enough fiber eating six or seven cups of green leafy vegetables. You're going to get fiber and meats that you eat. You get fiber and um, nuts and seeds and things like that. You don't need to take additional fiber capsules if you're eating your greens. So no need for awesome. that. Awesome. You know, um, Dr. Heather, are there any that come to your guys ask away? We're going to go about, we started at three forty. We'll give you about five more minutes here. We'll do another one next week. If you have any questions, drop them below. Dr. Heather, is there anything that you've heard this week traveling, you know? Yeah. I've, um, so sorry. I, I thought of one question really last night. I was at the governor's mansion in Topeka and then I got another question yesterday at the office. Like it's too expensive to eat healthy. If we, you and I are saying that we need to go low carb, high fat to eat healthy. If we need to do that, it's expensive. People think that it's actually cheaper to drive through and buy processed food, but everybody's meal, if you drive through for one person, is 7 or $8. I can buy a rotisserie chicken and a bag of organic broccoli and put two tablespoons of organic butter on there and be under $5 for three or four people. So it is not expensive. And then the other thing is, you know, what is your health worth to you? And what have you spent on non-food items? So if you're on here, when we get off, I dare you or challenge you, Open up your wallet, get out your credit card slips from grocery stores from where you ate out, add up everything that's a non-food item. So a soda, a vitamin water, zero, a Perrier, um, Pop-Tart, <laughs> dry fruit. If you've ordered things, maybe you've gone out to eat with your family and you got a sweet tea or you got a soda, circle those non-food items. You will be amazed how inexpensive it is to buy organic eggs, grass-fed butter, broccoli, cauliflower. At Aldi, it's like 60, 70 cents for the whole family for vegetables for dinner. So my thing is, it is not expensive. And what is your health worth? So number one, you don't have to even defend it with what is your health worth. It's worth what you want it to be. If you want to prosper and live long, then you need to put a little time and effort into your health. And I think the effort is more than the expense, but all the time, it's too expensive to eat healthy. It's too expensive. I'm like, give me your receipts, add them up, show me what you bought that was non-food item. And then people are generally pretty amazed when they feel like, okay, maybe I'm spending far more on stuff that I didn't think so. So it is not expensive. And what is your health worth? That's my biggest thing I hear all the time. And I mean, even if you're not, if, even if it's not to eat healthy, it's expensive. The world I came from, we were feeding every two and a half hours. Do you know how much money I spent on chicken and rice and sweet potatoes and all the Tupperware and fruit, fruit's expensive to eat six times a day. Yeah. And by the way, the leanest I was, that was the highest my cholesterol ever was. When I got on stage ready to compete, my cholesterol was the highest it had ever been. So what is your health worth? And when I, now I eat twice a day and eating high fat is satiation. Um, I was out at a salon this week in Paola with a bunch of women who stand on their feet all day. They feel like at three o'clock that brain fog starts to set in. The snacks in the back in those environments are ridiculous. So they've picked up the ketones. They've, they're trying to implement the lifestyle and you know, we're replacing that back room with some fat bumps they can grab, some nuts, the ketones. Like that's so much better and healthier and more energizing than what was laying out in the back. It's just, how do you want to fuel your day? How do you want to function with people? What's that worth, you know? Yep. And I, you know, I'm from Paola, so big shout out to Paola Panthers, my alma mater. The last thing I want to say is when I was at the ADHD um, Expo this weekend, people said, well, how do you implement it in? I'm like, you simply substitute it for the juice. So if the kids are having juice in the morning, just give them some Maui punch. If they're having a soda after school, put a little Perrier or put a little Croy in there. You know, if you're needing that glass of wine or that, you know, smooth tea at night, then just simply add that in there. So wherever you're drinking non-water items, just put it in there. You're going to actually find how much more amazing and how much more productive you're going to be when you talk about cost of effort. Like if you're too tired to mow your lawn, you're paying the neighbor, but now you feel amazing, can mow your own lawn that you just saved yourself $45 in my, in my neighborhood. So you just start substituting it for your non water items. And you're right. How yeah, expensive have, is six I chicken breasts a day? I haven't replaced my house cleaner yet, but, um, and that won't happen, <laughs> but I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's 
awesome. That's awesome. So I, and Abigail, yeah. I do want to do this, make this challenge because I know we're giving some time and hopefully making some clarification. We want to hear from you how much you spent on non food items this week. So that is ketchup, that's mustard. You don't need that stuff. You can use oil and vinegar. Any soda, any non-water drink, any bread, cake, cookie pie, that kind of stuff, or microwavable pizzas, things like that, non-food items. So if it's not a vegetable, if it's not a nut or fat, it's not an oil or an animal, then put it on a ticket and let's see what you spent this week. Dr. Heather, I've got one last question, and I think it's a really good one. It's an important one. I think there's a lot of confusion on the different types of high cholesterol. And um, somebody wrote, why do some people have high cholesterol on a keto diet? So what happens is if you're a sugar burner and you're maybe a pre-diabetic or just a normal diabetic, when we check your blood, you're going to have high glucose because your body's using glucose for fuel. If you're a true fat burner and you're keto adapted, you're going to find LDLs and cholemicrons, you're going to find that in your blood. So it makes sense that if you're not sugar burning, your sugar will go down your fats are going to go up in your blood when your doctor checks it because that's what your body's grabbing and using for fuel all day. It doesn't happen the first bit, but six months because your body's got to have energy. You know, we used to do this normal cholesterol was 300, then we went to 200, and then we had the heart disease, you know, triple. So it makes sense that if you're going to be a true fat burner, then you need to have fat in your bloodstream so your body can grab and utilize it. However, if you have high cholesterol on a high carb diet, that is a recipe for disaster because we know what happens when we combine sugar and butter, that's high cholesterol with high fat. We know that we get plaque and cardiovascular disease. So absolutely, you need to have some fat in your blood when your doctor checks it if you're fat burning. If you're not, there's another conversation. If you're APOE4, which I saw somebody ask, which is that marker that makes you genetically more likely to have it. Last thing though, it is not the size it is the size of your lipids. It is not the number. Because what happens is we have like a colander of our blood. So little ones filter down and get stuck and clogged up. The big fat ones are buoyancy and they pop around. So we talk about nice, big, healthy fat cells or LDLs or cholesterol being in your blood. So it needs to be higher if you're using that for energy. You don't want to be a fat burner and have no energy in your bloodstream, which means your cholesterol is low. But lots of great books, tons of TED Talks. You can go out there and you can educate yourself all week on that one. That's awesome. I want to cut it right here to keep this video compact. And guys, if you have any questions throughout the week, you can write them below on this video and we'll wrap those in to next Friday's Keto Debunk with Ask Dr. Heather. So thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you back next Friday. Have an amazing weekend.